but with, with with Vince personally, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to say this. We're going to talk about this for a couple minutes. If nobody likes it, I don't care. Or believes me, I don't care because it's the truth. Some people are going to say, well, he's taken up for Vince. He's defending Vince. Well, dip shits, listen to the whole thing. I'm going to tell you that my personal experience with Vince and everything I've heard before and afterwards of my person, the times before and after my personal experience with Vince's do not reconcile. But I believe all of them. I believe what I saw because I was there and I believe what I hear before and afterwards because it's a bunch of people saying a lot of the same shit. And it's Vince is different. So, you know, something's happened. But we've talked about this before. The Vince McMahon that I worked with closely for three years, 96 to 99, and I was working for the company, 93 to 96. It was, it was like you were around a friendly high school principal. He wasn't sending you to detention all the time or suspending you or punishing you or just talking down to you or whatever. He was friendly, but he never gave me the impression that I or anybody else in his immediate orbit should fuck up. It it was, I've never seen Vince McMahon take any kind of drug, whether it be steroids, HGH, bodybuilding stuff. You know it's been there. You know he's done it, but I never saw it. But I never saw him... I've had, you know, one of the threads of Vince McMahon stories on the internet is somebody said, Vince said to him, ah, that cocaine, you can put as much of that stuff in front of me as you want. I can snort it all day and never get addicted. I never saw Vince do cocaine or refer to himself doing cocaine in the past or look forward to doing cocaine in the future. Same thing with any other illegal drug. I've seen Vince drink especially the fucking, you know, the beer deals with Austin, right? But I had a show after the show. Boy, long, we've been at the raw taping for 14 hours in that building. As soon as he gets in the car, well, I'm going to have a beer? No. I've had a couple of steakhouses. I've seen him have expensive steakhouse drinks like a fucking whiskey on the rocks, pal, or whatever. But I've never seen him drunk. I was, you know, not only in the office at the same time as Annie wouldn't go to the office drunk, but I was in rental cars with him before shows, after shows, driving up to two in the morning, staying at the same hotels. Yes, when we would get out of a TV taping, if we were staying in that town, didn't have a long drive, we'd get back to the hotel. Vince would go to the bar. On a lot of occasions, so would Pat, so would Bruce. I would go to my room and get a goddamn pizza. Or if room service was still open, I was looking for food. Bruce liked to drink beer, Pat liked to talk to people, and Vince was in between them. After 12 hours in a building, I wasn't going to go to the hotel bar. I wasn't going to talk to anybody else. I was tired, I wanted to eat, and fucking turn the air conditioning up and watch TV in my underwear. But I never heard Bruce or anybody the next day, boy, you should have seen Vince. He was crocked last night. Or holy shit, Vince got out of hand. Never. You've heard stories from the 80s when they, he dared the Hart Foundation to give him their finish in a bar, and he did, or they did. I wasn't seeing that at that time. And with women or females or whatever, the talent roster, the girls, the they weren't even divas then. They were just the girls. You know, I again, he would make comments like any normal man. I've told the story with him and Shitstain just were fixated on Sable. They thought Sable was the most beautiful, attractive woman in the world. I couldn't get it. Because to me, it's the personality. She had no personality. Nothing. She looked great in an 8 by 10 if you like plastic surgery. Not one lick of personality or oomph for talent or sexiness. 
but they loved her. And that's when Vince was the one said, Oh, pal, can you imagine her in some white cotton panties? And then shit stained with, Oh, and I'm like, what the white cotton? But what about leather crotchless with attached fish nets? What the fuck? If you're going to fantasize about something, at least pull out the main event shit. Don't oh. be going over the fucking Sears catalog. Imagine if she was a paralegal. Oh, yeah. But I mean, but it wasn't even, it, it was guy stuff, but not even over the top guy stuff in private. I never saw him be or say anything inappropriate to any of the female employees or any of the female talent. And so that was, you know, again, you heard the stories of the old days. Well, I was the old days, maybe, or whatever. I mean, he was wrapped up in, goddamn pal, where's your suit and coat or your jacket and tie or whatever the fuck. If you tried to walk from the hotel next door to the arena and you were on his creative team, he didn't already have your tie on. He'd dress you down for that. This is a guy that's going to go out and fucking commit mayhem at the tanning salon, showing naked pictures of himself. That, that was reported years ago. That doesn't sound like the same guy to me. Or all this other stuff, but that was my experience. And like I said, I never saw him impaired, never saw him uh, intoxicated, never saw him inappropriate with people. And he did, it wasn't even like behind closed doors, this shit we're going to talk about. It, it, there wasn't even anything there. But then... I'm gone. I'm down here in Louisville for what a couple or three years. And I hear now they've bought a plane. They've got their own plane. And now there are these charter flights. And then you hear the story of the plane ride from hell, or you hear multiple stories from people who have been there on the writing team or worked in the office of private meetings that he was having on the plane with the, some of the divas and Laurenitis would be there to watch the door from the outside. I've had people actually, yeah, Laurenitis was standing there at the foot of the fucking stairs so nobody could get on the plane while Vince had his meeting with whoever. And I'm huh. what? And, and to go back to what we said before, Stephanie and Triple H, as they got more power, Laurenitis disappeared. And all of a sudden, when they lost power, Vince got Laurenitis right back in place. And I'm, but I'm just saying, as you know, I hear the stories and from people that I, you know, you never know what people are going to come up with, but they've got no reason to just blurt these things out and make them up, and they're so detailed. And when we heard the the deal with the tanning salon woman in Florida, I'm like, what the fuck? That, that sounds like... It doesn't sound like Vince. It sounds like some lonely weirdo with no money out somewhere. I've never seen him act like that, but... Was it the publicly traded company business, the stock scam? He became a billionaire. Now I've got my own airplane. It, 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 you know, Linda's gone. Linda's doing her own thing, living somewhere else, running for Senate. Because when I was going to his, that's another thing. Linda was home every morning. When I showed up at Wednesdays to write at Vince's, she was leaving to go to the office. And she'd come in about, Six or six thirty, we'd still be there. Uh, and then she would sometimes actually be the way that we got sprung. She'd say, "Well, we got to have dinner. Or we got to do something or whatever." All right, guys, go ahead and leave now. But you know, when they, you know, moved apart or whatever, when he got all this money, was this the change? Is he suddenly, you know, twenty years old again? He's a college kid. He's doing all this shit. I, but it's not the person that I dealt with on a regular basis for quite some time. But at the same time, I have no reason to doubt most of the stories because they come from reliable sources and or they're so detailed. So I don't know what happened to cause him to decide that he should all of a sudden be acting like this, but it, it, he wasn't doing it in the 90s. I don't know about the 80s or the thousands, but he wasn't doing it in the 90s. And again, look at where it's happening. It's happening at work. 
work right now is different than it was in the past. Maybe it wasn't as easy to just do that. Well, I shouldn't say that. He was having an affair with Emily Feinberg, his assistant, years ago. So that's not even the case. Yeah. But at the same time, well, that was before. That was before the trial. That was before I got there. Yeah. Uh, maybe he, you know, was scared straight and reformed a little bit for a while. And then I missed seeing the fun loving Vince. Were you there when the Playboy interview came out where he was bragging about cheating on Linda in the past and how he had to beg for forgiveness? No, that was, that was either, that was early 2000s, wasn't it? Wasn't that about the time that they went public? Maybe. I think that was right. I was I was gone the summer of ninety nine, and that and then shit started getting complicated. Here's the other thing, just to throw this out there, but you're talking about how people could change between when you knew him and now in his seventies, as it relates to money, and the level of money, and of course, personal relationships. But we're also leaving out the idea that here's a guy who, from the time you first met him, after that point. How many undiagnosed concussions did he have? All of a sudden, mm. he starts taking bumps in his life at that point? Getting hit with chairs? He wouldn't sell anything. He's, I mean, I'm not talking in the ring. He'll sell something for the show, but he wouldn't tell other people, I'm hurt, I'm injured, I've done something wrong. Unless, I mean, when he, when he tore his quads and couldn't stand up, that was a good little hint. But he wouldn't put anything over like something's a matter with me. But again, to talk about things that we hear from reliable people, people who are in the room, people who have no reason to lie, reliable people. We've heard stories going back several years about Vince McMahon being forgetful, having memory issues, immediately forgetting what he just said to someone. In some cases, not recognizing who people are, but that may have been something else. <laughs> but that's the other thing I've always thought about. Where if we're hearing these stories, if we're hearing them, and other people are, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, every single wrestling journalist and pseudo-wrestling journalist has heard these stories from someone if they're talking to anyone in that company. If we're hearing these stories, at some point, there has to be some sort of disclosure to shareholders that Vince McMahon legitimately does have any cognitive issues. And has he been tested for that? And that's what I'm thinking. What would be the biggest thing that would cause... Again, I'm just opining, thinking out loud. What would be the biggest thing to cause them to freak out and want an NDA? That would, I think, be the most embarrassing thing. That would be the most hurtful thing to the company. Because otherwise, what's it going to be? He likes to fuck dogs? I mean, what else could it really be? <laughs> he just holds their head. No, um... You know, that that's the thing. It's not like that Vince can be accused of a lot of shit he hadn't been accused of before, and he usually doesn't care. And he'll just fight back. But in this, you know, somebody that was intimately close to him over the last few years may have some, you know, uh, insight into whether or not Vince is there or not, like he used to be. And that could affect, because they're all worried about the stock price and business. And it's, it's, the richer people get, the more money means to them because the more they want and and the more they've got to protect it for whatever reason. And so maybe that was, I don't care what people think about me or I'm cheating on my estranged wife or me and Lauren Laurenitis have something going on where we're doing these things, but goddamn, we don't want anything to happen to the stock price. I don't know. But uh, it's not... I don't know that Vince's behavior in this respect is symbolic or indicative of Alzheimer's or post-concussion syndrome or just being almost 80 years old, or whether it's just a continuation of Vince has always... I've talked to... He's, he's like an intelligent, well-spoken Donald Trump in a lot of ways. He thinks that he can do anything and everything that he can get away with. I mean, we talked about, did he start doing these things because he got his own plane? When you think about it, the stories we've all told, he acted like he had a part to play in it when he was flying Delta. If the goddamn pilot didn't like it or didn't have an answer that he liked, he would press for another one 
or go to argue with the guy or whatever. So I could imagine if they acted that way on Delta, what he acted like when he owns the fucking thing. But uh, I, I mean, I think a lot of it is Vince has always thought that he can do anything that he wants to do and the rules don't apply. And to be honest, he's gotten away with it and created a situation where for the majority of his life, that's been the case. He's been the boss. It was his kingdom. Before this publicly traded business, he could do anything he wanted, say anything he wanted, they would make it so. Even with this, look at the way the stock is set up. Well, he's in complete control. But even after that's uh, even after the publicly traded business, it's still set up where he's in complete control, but also he never had any oversight at all. Now he's got a board of directors and all this stuff, but they've still for the last 20 years made it to where there's very little oversight because these people that are not involved in the wrestling business, they're used to dealing with other companies and real businesses and things where if they say something to the stockholders, you kind of believe it because there's penalties for not telling the truth. But <laughs> Vince has still operated this whole thing just like he always did. And the people, the stockholders who aren't wrestling people, they might remember when the stockholders got upset because they thought Mr. McMahon got killed in the limo. They're like, it's going to kill the stock price. People think he's dead. They don't know. <laughs> So they don't know work from a shoot, from an angle, from a fucking whatever. And so they've still been able to get away with tons of things in the WWE that no other company would be able to get away with with their stockholders just because the stockholders don't know what's real and what's a work and where to differentiate between the two. 